before <clears throat> the, the ethnic tensions, uh, Solomon Islands uh, are called the Happy Isles. The politicians, um, both national and provincial, use uh, the ignorance of, uh, of young people to um, to advance their motive or intention or, or plan could uh, uh, up this uh, ethnic tension. And that's the reason why <clears throat> they started off to um, just the people from other provinces out from Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal people thought that uh, those of us in the other provinces are uh, using their uh, resources more than the other. They were thinking they, they are the ones who contributed more to the national purse than the other provinces. Within the course of the next few hours, the government caucus will be asked to be convened to discuss the current security situation and how it impacts on the governance of Solomon Islands. A letter was handed to the Prime Minister this morning asking him to resign within 48 hours. In the last 14 days, the regular police has virtually lost control of the security situation in Honiara. By violence, as has been the case on Coral Canal, our nation will face a social catastrophe unheard of in our history as a nation. Criminals now rule the streets, causing unprecedented fear in the minds of our urban residents and visitors to our country. Within the next few days or weeks, the likelihood of peace returning to Solomon Islands is now becoming a more remote than ever before. The tension is more about unfair distribution of uh, wealth. Militants from the Guadalcanal used to come here. They go around the island uh, demanding figs and money. And it's not about um, fighting for them to become independent, but more or less they want to, to take over uh, because the gold rich, you know, the, the plantations uh, on Guadalcanal, more development on Guadalcanal than uh, other provinces. So, <clears throat> They want to have a say in that. So that is why they start off chasing, and that is the, the beginning of this um, ethnic tension. The other parties, uh, like the Malaita uh, Eagle Force, more or less acting uh, in defense their people, because uh, a lot of people are Malaitans, and uh, how they treat them, uh, not free them humanly, so that's why they fight back. Uh, and that's, that's why the, 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 the conflict is between Malaita and uh, Guadalcanal. As a Guadalcanal man, the land is still mine. Whether, I sell, whether you acquire the land legally from me or not, the land is still mine. So when I, whenever I want to chase you out from the land, I have all the right. The crisis when Malaitans were chased into town and the town was sort of closed off because the Malaitan militants controlled Honiara and the Gorakana militants controlled outside Honiara. I think the atmosphere in Honiara at the time was this whole desperateness of the situation, yeah? Maybe they weren't happy, they didn't say, they wanted compensation. It just got all muddled up, yeah? I think in people's mind what was causing all this. It was mostly confusing. We were confusing what, what's happening with the police, what's happening with the government, and what's happening with uh, everything. Ordinary Solomon Islanders were really in a real jam, yeah? I remember people were collecting water from drains, and there was no gas supply in town. Women were cutting firewood, taking it into the suburbs. And that, that's a sign of something wrong, when they, they don't have access to water, running water in their homes, and kids stopped going to school because the teachers didn't go, go teach. And it just, the whole society was just grinding to a halt there. Yeah? People um, raiding Chinese shops, 
uh, robbing houses. So it's uh, militancy and a lot of lawlessness. And then you see clashes of people fighting in, in the centers of town. And it, it's just, just a bad psychological effect eh, on, on people, and not only on people, on young kids. What they saw and what they were putting up there for them as role models. About the Easter period of 1998, I mean, we were in Honiara. We traveled from Honiara to our home, Baigat, the western part of Gudal Canal. And then uh, we arrived at home, and then this group of people actually came over and attacked us at the early evening of that day. When they took me out from the house with uh, I mean, guns, Went guns at uh, my head and back and all this. Grabbed me out from my house. The wife took the two kids and actually fled in the bush. In my case, there were some groups from Guadalcanal Canal came at night, midnight, and you know, came into our uh, place where we were at our residence. Yeah, they came and just shot my father's house. They were just bombards, shooting and shooting and shooting. One of my friends, who's also from the same village, came and reported to me and said, your dad, uh, they've got your dad. And he was torturing him. They bashed him. They uh, chopped his hands, his feet, his chest, from the body, from the top to his feet. Dad had a uh, 22, a short gun, so I said, oh, okay, they're using arms, I'll use arms too, so, yeah. So I uh, started, you know, okay, coming down to town, and I said, okay, I'll take revenge. Everyone that uh, was being attacked knows who actually attacked them, yeah? It's not a hidden story. It's, it's people living around, it's all neighbors and friends and all this. KK and uh, his boys, yeah, his, uh, some of his uh, senior, senior commanders, I should say, who actually came after me and bashed me up, burned my house down, and took away some of my valuable properties, and eventually I lose everything, except the wife and the two kids. A malicious uh, wild canal starting to get close into town. Uh, they were coming around the town boundary and uh, uh, they were saying they were gonna uh, hit the power station, they were gonna get the water. And if nothing is happening, then we just clean up on here. I mean, the water, we have the power to close the water, we have the power to close the electricity. And that's the time when we try to chase out these Malaitans. We had our checkpoints. One was at Alligator Creek, and the other was, was down at the White River. Yeah, we were just sticking together with the gold, saying, let's defend our people, that they won't intrude into the town. Nobody was looking after the armory. But in fact, we did have a uh, few boys, uh, Malaitans, who were working still with, at the Rover headquarters. When the armory was, was uh, raided long early morning of the 5th of June, from where I missed up, I can see people uh, moving around along our police headquarters and uh, blocking the roads and uh, now uh, taking out weapons from the, from the armory. And then immediately thereafter, I took control of the, uh, the members of the paramilitary. People were so angry. Uh, they felt neglected by the national government hence the uh, security operation 2000 and in June 2000. A special broadcast of a special announcement to clarify the situation in the capital city, Honiara, this fellow time now. Hello, Solomon Islanders and visitors to Solomon Islands. At exactly 400 hours this morning, local time, 
elements of the Royal Solomon Islands Police Paramilitary Force with the assistance of two platoons of the Malay the Eagle Force stormed and took control of our country's main police armories located at Rove in Honiara. A letter was handed to the Prime Minister this morning asking him to resign within 48 hours. If he does, Parliament shall be asked by the relevant authority to convene to allow for the election of a new Prime Minister and thereafter the formation of a new government. Our leaders had lent themselves into a situation to create that kind of instability then uh, to force a, a change in a political uh, situation. Yeah, this was a coup. I mean, I'm not straight to say no, no. Uh, and uh, I think I'm uh, wrong for anyone for taking a government by that kind of uh, method, yeah? And then ended up in a situation where they could not control it, yeah. They had no better, you know, safety net to, to, to protect us. Should it have happened? Of course, if... Uh... We had foreign intervention in 1998 or to 1999, and uh, that was requested by Bartholomew Ulufalu, late Ulufalu. Uh, things would have, could have been to, uh, prevented. Well, they broke the law. You see, if we, if we pardon all of them, yeah, uh, like some of the critics are saying, you are setting a very dangerous legal precedent for the future. When that did not happen and then the government collapsed, the police force uh, collapsed, then of course uh, the options were fairly limited. Uh, retaliatory uh, action was taken by militants and that led to what we know afterwards. It could have been prevented. I believe that no future leaders or a group of leaders would ever allow that situation to happen again. Our weapons are now in the hands of uh, untrained people. The majority of uh, police officers in Honiara are left uh, now helpless and fella cannot do much at that time. ladies from Guadalcanal and Malaita uh, got together, had some uh, peace agreement, ceasefire, and then we ended up in uh, Townsville to sign the uh, peace agreement. After the signing of the Townsville, Townsville peace agreement, both parties uh, seems to fail in complying with the Townsville peace agreement, especially on the disarmament. Uh, criminal elements virtually rule Honiara. Uh, there were guns everywhere. Uh, we did organize a series of uh, uh, gun surrender uh, ceremonies. Uh, many guns came back, but uh, several of them uh, remained in the hands of uh, former militants. So there was uh, chaos in Honiara and in certain parts of Malaita and Kurokanal as well. Solomon Islands at that stage had really uh, descended into a, a situation where um, armed ex-militants were had formed gangs in, in Honiara. The police force, the uh, Royal Solomon Islands police force, had, had completely collapsed and, and fractured along ethnic lines. Um, the, the government um, was, was really struggling to, to, to perform its basic, most basic functions, um, to deliver services. You know, ex-militants were, were holding the government, literally holding the government to, to ransom, going in, into Treasury and, and demanding money and so forth. Um, you also had, whilst the problems um, at that time were very much centred on Honiara, you, you also had problems with, you know, in other parts of the country, including in, in the Western Province, on parts of Malaita, um, and of course on, on the weather coast where the renegade uh, militants. 